Hey there, I'm Erica Allen. I'm one of the pastors of Horizon Church. I am so glad you're joining us for worship this morning. We're continuing our series, Good Questions. So I'm just wrestling through some of the questions that you all have asked me over the past six months or so. One question that I'm asked most often by people in the church and outside of the church is, why is everyone so mad? And what they mean by that question is, Anytime a hot button topic is brought up, you can see people just start to get mad. They get really passionate about their answers to the question and they get really, really mad. I, I, I was wrestling with why it is that we do that. Like, why do we get so mad at each other over all of these things? And this is what I've come to realize, that we have a long division problem. So a few years ago, I was tutoring a kid named Malik. I, I was a math teacher, so I was helping him with math. And he tells me that he's got to do all these division problems. And I was like, perfect. I love long division. He was like, what's long division? And I'm like, it's how you do a division problem. And he's like, no, we. I don't do long division. I do partial quotient division. And I'm like, Anything with a name like that can't be the right answer to how you solve a division problem. So I get out a piece of paper. We solve the problem using long division. Here, here's an example behind me of what long division looks like. And then he shows me what partial quotient looks like. And I can't even remember. So that's like all I remember about partial quotient. But I asked this teacher, I was like, why are you not teaching these kids long division? And she said, we haven't taught long division in over a decade. And I'm like, why? Like the kid can't get an answer to the problem with the way that you're teaching division. And she said, well, long division provides answers without providing any understanding of where the answer came from. I was like, okay, well, all that I feel like matters is that he's getting the right answer. So I'm going to teach him long division. She's like, no, no. We want him to understand what division is. We want him to understand what it looks like to divide this large number by this smaller number into these groups. And we, we want him to understand that. And long division is just giving him, the, giving him the answer to the problem. It's not helping him understand how he got to the answer. And as I studied scripture this week, as I heard your question resonate in my ear over and over and over this week, I realized that that's exactly what we have as the problem of why we're all so mad. We have a long division problem. We have a history of being people who are divided on these, on these really important issues in the world. And the reason that we are divided is because so many of us have come to this answer without understanding how we got there. We don't really wrestle with issues of faith or scripture or reason. We don't really wrestle with the experience that other people bring to these problems. We just get to the answer and that's the answer. And we don't really understand how we got there. I, I want to take just a second and let's read James chapter four, because it helps us understand the danger of getting to the answer without understanding the problem. Verse one and two, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. This were the words that were written by a pastor to a church who was fighting and angry and couldn't get along. They had a long division problem. They'd come to some answers, but they didn't understand how they got there. So their pastor prays, God, give me some words to tell these people. And this is what he says. What causes the fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Maybe you have a long division problem too, and you're coming to answers without understanding the problem. You come to an answer to something in your life without understanding that it's your own desires, your own wants that are fueling everything that you're doing and saying. 
you can't get along with the people around you, take a moment and examine what your desires are in your life. Is your desire for yourself to get further ahead, to be right, to have all the right answers, to have this amount of money, to have this amount of your life protected? Is everything that you actually desire about you because that's going to cause fights and quarrels among you. Your desires matter. And when your desires are all about you, it contributes to our long division problem. We continue to give answers without understanding, and it's dangerous. In verse 2, he says, you desire, but you do not have, so you kill. And you all think, Erica, that's really extreme. But think Think right now about the angry people in your life who destroy the things around them, who destroy the things in your family or at work, who destroy meals or conversations by having to be right all the time. Why are people so mad? Because our real desire is to be right and be on top, and you might as well be killing and destroying if that's the way you operate in your life. You covet, you want things, but you cannot get what you want, so you just quarrel and fight. What James is telling us, what God is telling us through James, is that the reason that we quarrel, that we fight, that we're mad at each other and we want things to, to just not work out good for other people is because of the desires of our own hearts. What is the desire in your heart? Have you come to some answer about some hot topic issue and you can't even talk to the people you love because of it? What is your desire? Is it to be right or is it to have meaningful relationships with the people around you? Why are you quarreling and fighting? It probably has something to do with your desires. I think that's why people are so mad at each other. It's because our desires are, are not in the right place. As I read those words from James to the people of God, to pay attention to your desires, I couldn't help but think of an image from 2013. In a worldwide race, Abel Mutai from Kenya was beating everybody in, in, this, in this race. He was smoking everybody. He was going to win the race. There was a Spanish man behind him by the name of Ivan Fernandez. A couple meters short of the finish line, Abel Matai, the Kenyan runner, gets all confused. He thinks he's finished the race and he thinks he's won and he's celebrating. And Abel and Ivan Fernandez, the Spanish runner, realizes what's happening and he starts to shout at him, finish the race, finish the race, finish the race. But he's speaking to him in Spanish. The Kenyan runner doesn't understand Spanish, so he, he's confused and he doesn't understand what's going on. So the Spanish runner, Ivan Fernandez, pushes the Kenyan runner over the finish line, so he beats him. At the end of the race, a reporter asks Ivan Fernandez, why in the world would you have let this guy beat? You had the opportunity to win the championship. Why did you push this guy to victory? And Ivan Fernandez said, it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. And the, the reporter like just still couldn't believe it. So he asked him a second time, why did you do that? Why did you push this guy to victory? And he says again, because it, like it was clear he didn't understand what was going on and it was the right thing to do. The reporter asks Ivan Fernandez a third time, why did you push this guy to victory? You had a chance to be the worldwide champion. Why didn't you do that? And he looks at the guy and he says, why would I do that? What merit would this gold medal have? What would my mother think? How would I explain this gold medal to people? I Like, that's not what the generations to come need. The generations to come, they need to, they need to be desiring something different. I have a desire that the children growing up behind me will have a desire not just to win, but to push others to win. In that moment of his life, when he had the chance to fight for victory and fight for a win, what he chose to do was fight for the important thing, a desire that was growing deep in his heart and his soul, for not just for himself to win, but for others to win. 
I can't help but think of a story that Jesus told that sounds a lot like this. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus, to fight with him. He was angry. He says, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Let's argue and quarrel about this. Let's fight about this, Jesus. And Jesus says, what's written in the law? How do you read it? And the guy answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. That's a pretty good desire, right? If you spend your whole life just trying to love God with all that you have and love your neighbor, that's a great desire, right? And Jesus says, you've answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus. He wanted to be right. He had a desire to be the smartest guy in the room. And so he looks at Jesus and he says, so who's my neighbor? So who's my neighbor? And in reply, Jesus said, a man was going down to Jerusalem from Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and he bandaged his wounds. He poured oil and wine on them. He put a man on his own donkey. He brought him to an inn and he took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, took out a bunch of money, and he gave it to the innkeeper. And he said, look after him. When I return, I will reimburse you with any expense that I had. Jesus said, which of these three men do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? And the expert in the law said, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Why is everyone so mad? It's because our desire is not to have mercy on other people. The desires of our hearts and our lives isn't to push other people on to victory. It's about us being right and having victory and what it is that we want. If you want the world to stop being so mad all the time, let's us work on us right now. Let's do what Jesus says. He says, go and do likewise. Have mercy on someone. Today, right now, you are going to have an opportunity before the end of the day to have mercy on someone else. To give love and kindness and compassion with nothing in return. And as you continue to give mercy freely, God will grow that desire in your life so that you can offer mercy more abundantly. If you want to know why the world is so mad, it's because we haven't listened to the words of Jesus. Have mercy. Go and do likewise. Today, I ask you, who can you push on to victory? How can you let God grow the desire in your life to have more mercy? I believe the world can be a less hostile and more kind place, and I believe it starts with us. Will you pray with me? God, if there's someone listening right now who doesn't know the mercy and fullness of your forgiveness through Jesus Christ, I pray right now that they will accept your mercy and kindness. I pray that you'll grow the desires in their heart and their life to share your love and compassion and gentleness with the world around them. I pray those of us who are living in this mad and angry world will be people who are different, offering mercy, listening to the words of Jesus to go and do likewise, share your mercy, to push others on to victory and success, change the desires of our hearts and our lives that others may be successful. Thank you for loving us. Amen.